Hey everyone, Sam Davidson here with MEA Worldwide for a very special interview with Percy Daggs III, also known as Wallace Fennell from Veronica Mars. I'm a huge marshmallow, so Thank you. I've been so excited for this interview for a few weeks now and um, we just had the fourth season yeah. dropped right after your panel at Comic-Con. Yeah. Did you know that that was in the works? We had a little bit of, of an idea. Kristen and I had talked about it before because there's three birthdays. There's Ryan Hansen's, mine, hers, and uh, she just kind of had this idea back when we were shooting the final episode that, hey, you know what, this is what we might do you know, during the birthday season for the fans. Um, it wasn't set for sure. When we got mm -hmm. to Comic-Con, it was confirmed that that's what we were gonna do for sure. And uh, yeah, I, they, they went crazy. Hall H went crazy for a second. And I did too. I was at Comic-Con and yeah. I stayed in the hotel that night to, okay. to watch as much oh, as wow. I possibly could. That's a real marshmallow. That's a good, thank you. Thank you. I ordered delivery, I had some <laughs> wine, and I was just like, I'm good. I don't need to go to any parties. Oh, wow. um, it was a really very intense season, but before we get to that, because I want to warn our <clears throat> fans of some spoilers, because we gotta talk about it. We gotta talk about yeah, it. Yeah, there's a lot of feelings going on right, right. now, yeah, but... Absolutely. The Veronica Mars universe, one of the things I love about Wallace and Veronica's characters mm -hmm. is that you're not a gay best friend. Mm -hmm. You are a straight male best friend and there was never any talk or consideration. It's like you're just best friends and nothing more. Right. And that was such a beautiful and in a way like feminist thing because back when the show started, that was a lot of thing, well, they're best friends, why can't they be like yeah. romantic? Who thought about it? Nobody thought about it, it never came up. And uh, I remember as a male, you, you know, feeling like that's not possible. Like, you know, I know there's platonic friendships and uh, you know, when, when I was dating a woman or something like that, if they had a best friend and that was a guy, I was like, okay, is what's the history or what's going on, have you ever? And then I didn't consider myself that I had a friend like that. And I was kind of being one-sided because my brother dated a young lady who ended up after they broke up, becoming friends, and there was nothing in between it. Maybe my brother was the reason, the, the in-between, but I don't think so. It was just like a big sister to me. And um, that friendship was important to me because that's where I got a lot of relationship advice. And um, she just was always there for me in, in, in clutch moments as well. So I was glad to see it that way because I think that when you cross that boundary, it, it can change friendships, of course, right? Yeah. So um, it was great to see that she was there for him that way and he was able to be there for her that way. And what I also love is I'm a huge TV junkie, so I have kind of analyzed TV shows that I love. And there's usually a new person that comes into the picture at the right. beginning of every series. Right. There was obviously a death at the beginning of this series, but you were the new person that comes into this school in a right. way. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And uh, that was, uh, hadn't been in, in a situation where I played a character like that yet. And the way that he's introduced to the series was a challenge uh, for me. I didn't know auditioning, Sam, that that was going to be the scene. Mm -hmm. That wasn't in the audition sides or anything like that. But um, when I got it, uh, I could identify with it. He's a single, um, raised by a single mom from Chicago, didn't know his father. I knew I have a great father, but my parents were divorced as well. And just coming from Chicago and just having your mom and being protective of your mom and your situation, but coming to a new school like that and having that kind of experience from having to try to tell the truth and stay by your moral fabric and be honest and then have that happen to you. Um, the public humiliation of it all is one thing, uh, but for me, shooting that scene, I, I was, uh, identifying with that type of loneliness. You know, when you're humiliated publicly, you steal yourself. So especially young boys, you get pants, you get the wrong side of a joke, you, you steal yourself for stuff right. like that. But just being up there in front of 200 extras and thinking about that character, that had to be the loneliest feeling. And just upon trying to- Upon that flagpole. Upon yeah. that flagpole. And, and, um, and lo and behold, here comes somebody with some scissors who they forge a, a truly, like you said, platonic friendship that that uh, has lasted a long time on television. And I, I think in a way they both saved each other from kind of this loneliness that that you're speaking of. So have you and Kristen been a friend of each other's for a long time since yeah. then? Did that develop outside of the show? I would say there, there was a healthy respect and friendship outside of the show. Mm -hmm. Like we um, would, it, would intend, intend to hang out and do certain things, but Kristen's Bell, Kristen Bell star just shot off the media and she was busy and we both, funny, we both have parallel you know, she met the love of her life right after we wrapped. I met the love of my life right after we wrapped. 
both got married at the courthouse. Our kids are different in age, about a year or so. So I think just life took us where we were, and we stayed in touch. And then uh, every now and then something special would happen. And now we're actually uh, in communication and closer and more now than back in 2004, 2006. Um, but yeah, I mean, I've developed great relationships with everybody over time because I think life just took us that way. We were 22 years old. Now Jason Doring and I, our kids play, and we weren't, we were, like I said, respectful and, um, you know, cared about each other, liked each other, but didn't hang out. But now we actually hang out, Francis Capra. So yeah. The show's very much like a boomerang because <laughs> We had the first three seasons, it ended extremely abruptly, and then it went on Netflix, I believe, first, because I want to say I saw the show in its entirety in about 2010 okay. um, for the first time on Netflix, okay. and everyone else really started watching it too, right. and then all of that interest came back to the show, and then we had a few years later the movie. Right. What was that experience like, kind of having the fans uh, be such a big part of it and that you guys probably thought this was never going to happen again? Everything about Veronica Mars is somewhat surreal. You know, when I look back, it was my first series regular, you know, kid from Long Beach, started when I was 11, 12. Booking my first series regular was a huge moment in my life. Mm -hmm. And it was kind of a surreal moment. I literally ran around the block like two or three times, just enjoy. Um, then the film comes and the fans want to pay for us to shoot a movie. Paid $30. Paid $30. I was a receptionist at the time. <laughs> and, um, I got a little t-shirt or something. And I was, and I had just actually gotten my cat her name's Buffy, and it was mm. our first weekend together. Your, your other favorite. Yes, my other favorite. Uh, but we watched the movie because uh, you know the fans got the first look, right. uh, and it was it was such an incredible thing to be a part of. I felt so special, even just donating thirty dollars, you know. And that's that's how special it was for us to just think that somebody hardworking and you, Veronica Mars being about classism and those kind of things and just knowing that there's a hard-working person out there that connected with these characters enough to give anything to have us make a movie it was it was unbelievable to be honest so that was like very close to the heart but then again for me it was another first that was the first time all of my family in Long Beach can go to the theater that I worked in at 16 years old and tore tickets and cleaned wow. um, to watch their son nephew grandson you know on the big screen so that was a huge moment in my life and then this was just, I just couldn't believe it. It was fantastic. It took a bit of a different direction than we thought. So we killed Logan. We did. And uh, tell me a little bit about your initial reaction when you found out this news. It was hard because Jason is my friend. You know, Jason told me. Um, I didn't find out through the story. You know, just passing each other on the lot, he pulled me to the side and said, hey, Purse. And I could see the emotion in his eyes. He had taken a few days to process it himself. Um, so right before I shoot a scene, he decides to tell me, and I'm like, wait a minute, man, I gotta go, I gotta go work. And I was just, I was kind of devastated because just so many quick things run through your mind. Like, I don't even know if we are ever going to do this again, if we don't do this again, how do you feel? How do I, how am I supposed to, you know, it was just a, it was just a really difficult time and it still is. I understand what the fans are going through. It still is. Like even sometimes when it crosses my mind, um, that, that Logan is no longer there, uh, I hear and respect the reasoning why Rob felt like that was what was necessary. And I understand the fans' feelings because they're so connected to these characters. These characters are, are 15 years deep and, and uh, in adults' lives and, and in lives that they've introduced to their children. Um, so it was hard. It was hard. I, I really don't know what else to say besides um, marshmallows, I love you. I know how you feel. Um, I hope you don't become hard marshmallows and you stay with us and you and you <laughs> you continue to love the franchise and what it is. Um, there's still so much more to do. There's still so much more for Veronica Mars in, in, in the Neptune universe. And I, I hope you um, continue to love what we do. I hope you love the season four and uh, I hope you understand. And uh, we'll get through it. We'll yeah. get through it. If there's a season five, maybe maybe it'll mean just as much as it's always meant in the future. And I hope it still does mean a lot to you because you guys still mean a lot to us and we love you.
And I know that you're not Rob Thomas, and so you are. I didn't do it. Yeah, you didn't do it. I didn't do it. You're not responsible (laughs) for what these decisions or future decisions, but um, I mean, in a way, though, I know some people were taking, the fans were taking this uh, as, well, can Veronica not have love and a blossoming career? Like, to, to have both. And so, if we have another season, are we going to see her find someone else or are we more kind of just going to be focused on her as a loner, do you think? It's tough. It's a decision. It's noir. It's the yeah. genre. It's what, it's what it is. You know what I mean? And I know how they feel, but that's what this genre can, can be. You know what I mean? So mm-hmm. can she have love? Yeah. I mean, how? I, I, don't, I don't know. I we did know. get a little bit of Leo, though. We got a little bit of Leo there. Which and, was nice. And who doesn't love and, a good Max Greenfield on their screen? And then who who doesn't want to see her avenge her husband's death and deal with her grief and lean on the people around her and solve more mystery and find love again? And, and who know? I mean, she says she wants to do this for until she's Angela Lansbury. Mm-hmm. I'm sure there was a lot of love in Angela Lansbury's life. But that's not to say I don't understand what Logan means and who Jason Doring is. Uh, as an actor, as a friend, and, and, and what he means to, to the series. So I'm not saying you shouldn't feel the way you feel, but stick stick with it, man. Did you she know amazing. there is a um, petition right now? I what believe on uh, change.org, we didn't see a body. Oh, wow. <laughs> so, oh, wow. so there's so... people that are actually like, no, we've seen your interviews, Rob. Just listen to us. I mean, I think Rob Thomas is probably very set in his creative ways, as he should be, because he's a brilliant creator. So it's very interesting, though, because, I mean, we that's how this movie really started in the first place, is right. fans. He's the fans. And I don't think that he did anything to... I don't think his motive was to betray them mm-hmm. that way. I, I think he understands exactly what they mean and why we're even still here. And I know that the viewership means everything if they want a season five. So if there, there's a lot of fans that understand it and continue, want to see more. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of people that, a lot of those fans created new marshmallows who still love what they saw and love what the story is and weren't fans in 04. So for them, this is fresh. Now they want to see more. They want to know what happened. They want to, so um, as far as change, as far as changing the final episode or convincing Rob to undo what he did, mm-hmm. unfortunately, I, in my personal opinion, I think that's a long shot. Yeah, once you make a decision like that, it's probably yeah. extremely set. Yeah, he's a creator. I mean, yeah. He's, he's a writer. He's, yeah, he did that. He, I'm sure he didn't just wake up and say, you know what, this is what we're going to... I mean, he thought long and hard, and I'm sure those were painful, difficult decisions for him and Diane Ruggiero and, mm-hmm. and, and everybody involved. So um, as much as it hurts us, I can imagine how much, how hard it was for them to even feel like that was what was best mm-hmm. um, for the direction of the show. Absolutely. And so do you feel in a way that your life has mirrored Wallace's kind of because... In some ways. Yeah. We've got a lot of similarities. Sometimes I tell Rob, I say, I don't know what you're doing. It seems like you're trying to... Are you checking my Instagram? Are you trying to write my life? <laughs> I have two beautiful children. I'm married, settled now. When I was younger, uh, me and Wallace didn't have as much in common as, as far as our high school experience. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think he knows my relationship with my family, my mother. We both have that kind of experience. Um, I think, uh, humbly, I think I do share the same kind of heart as Wallace as far as the way I, the compassion I have for people and the way I love people, the way I love our, you know, our fans and my family particularly. Um, so, uh, and I think I'm a pretty good best friend. I know there's some people, I have, I'm not a perfect best friend. I'm sure I've had moments where I wasn't there for someone when I needed to be, but I think Wallace um, in his maturation into manhood uh, mirrors, mirrors mine in, in a few ways. Amazing. And lastly, what else are you up to? I mean, we can't sit around waiting for Veronica Mars. No, we can't. Forever. No, we can't. I'm, I'm working on a few things. <clears throat> I did a series called The New Peter and Wendy. I played Josh Hook, Captain Hook, uh, and the writers, creators of that, Sean DeLoach, Kyle Walters. We have a couple of things that we're working on, uh, but writing, producing partner named Sheldon Robbins. We have a couple of projects that we're pitching and working on. So I'm trying to be on all facets of the business now. I've been around for a long time, so we're trying to create content and, and pitch it and sell it. and maybe call some people over at Hulu and, and get some things done as well. So yeah, I'm just trying to create myself and put myself in position to play roles I want to play and, and knock out my bucket list of uh, acting goals and creative goals. Fantastic. Well, thank you so much for stopping by and chatting with me. us and, ta- and chatting with me. I made, you take a, I, made, I made you wait a little bit. Are you kidding me, I'm Wallace sorry. Spinell? I would wait forever <laughs> for you, uh, okay? Thank you. Thank you. And thank you guys so much for tuning in and we will see you next time. <laughs>